Beyond doubt, this is the single most familiar image of American victory in World War II. It was just one devil of a good picture, and he shot it in the breadth of a second, and you can see in the energy and the exertion of putting the pole up, the strength that was needed to do it. Norman Hatch should know as well as anyone. He didn't shoot the famous photograph, but he was there to witness the event and served as a combat photographer himself from the earliest days of the war until its conclusion. Once you get that camera up and you start shooting, you're in a different world. Very rarely did I ever get down on the ground flat and shoot. I did once or twice just to get the angle. Let's say 95% of it was standing up and shooting. I wasn't scared. I didn't have a, a fear factor working, which if I did, I think would have stopped me from doing what I was doing. Now, the work of war photographers like Norman Hatch has been organized into an exhibit, currently on display at the prestigious Corcoran Museum in Washington, D.C. The Corcoran couldn't be a more perfect uh, location to see an exhibition like this. We're not far from the war memorials, the World War II Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial. And so we are geographically perfectly placed to consider the history of, um, of American involvement in war. The show examines 165 years of war photography from conflicts around the world. Rather than follow a strict chronological course, it displays photos clustered in thematic areas, such as the fight, which covers actual combat, but also children, grief, faith, and aftermath. The organizers of the show decided to show war as something that doesn't really have clear beginnings and clear ends. The memory of war endures after the conflict ends. Uh, and I think that the organizers of the show felt that it would really do a disservice to the experience of war um, that people have had if they were to focus only on the fighting. Among the unforgettable images of war's aftermath is this shot, titled Burst of Joy. Shot in 1973 by press photographer Sal Vader, it captures the precise moment when Air Force officer Robert Sturm reunites with his family after five years of captivity in Vietnam. For many Americans, Burst of Joy signified that the long war was finally coming to an end. And the image gives an idea to the viewer. It, it makes one think that, um, that this perfect moment lasts forever, just as the photograph lasts forever. So too with the image known as Old Glory Goes Up on Mount Suribachi, which emblemized the conquest of the Japanese island of Iwo Jima. Taken in February 1945 by a press photographer, it became a symbol to the nation of impending victory. But there's more to the story. The image that people think of as the perfect moment of the end of a conflict when triumph is realized and, um, uh, and heroic soldiers raise the American flag signaling uh, the end of, uh, of, uh, of a battle, uh, in fact came uh, fairly early in a conflict that would stretch on for another month. What's more, says Norman Hatch, who was there, photo editors cropped the original image to produce the smaller but far more evocative image that we know today. And that is what hit the States. And on a Sunday, it was a hit in about every, every uh, newspaper in the country of any value. And uh, so uh, it raised the spirits of the people mainly because it was the flag and the fact that they were up on the top of that mountain. And so uh, you can't beat a thing like that. Not even, it seems, with motion pictures, which Norman produced throughout the war. His body of work includes one of the first and most famous war documentaries ever produced. With the Marines at Tarawa, a real-life account of America's first major amphibious battle in the Pacific, won an Oscar from the motion picture industry in 1944. But that's far from being its most important distinction. The public was not aware of what war was like until my film. There were bodies floating in the water, up and back and forth, as you know. 
The film's content was considered so sensitive that President Roosevelt himself was called upon to approve its release. Unlike Norman's films, the photos here at the Corcoran tell stories in a frozen moment. Taken together, they communicate a powerful impression of the experience of war that remains with visitors. A still photograph captures the instant. It puts us into a particular place and a particular moment in a way that the moving image cannot. It essentially distills an event for us to remember.